Welcome back. Let's do a RL low pass filter. Okay, so we're given some stuff. So the, the input on this guy is going to be a steady state function of time, a cosine function, 50 cosine omega t volts. And you're given the filter circuit, it's this one, the one with the output voltage measured across the resistor. And so the input voltage is over here, V sub i, it's a function of time. So we have the steady state voltage input function, and then you've got this output. And you're given this thing and your this input function. So you're asked to find <clears throat> omega c, the cutoff frequency in hertz, and you're asked to find the magnitude of the transfer function for various frequencies. So for omega equal to the cutoff frequency and omega equal to 0 0.3 of the cutoff frequency and omega equal to 3 times the cutoff frequency. So we're asked to find the attenuation for these three things. Okay, we'd have ex we would expect this one here to be the um, 1 over the square root of 2. And this is a low pass filter so we, we would expect this guy here to have a um, high attenuation value like up in the 90s because it's a low frequency 0.3 of cutoff it's lower frequency than the cutoff and then this guy here this is a higher frequency we would expect it to be attenuated a lot that is we would expect the attenuation value h of j omega to be to be a small number meaning that this is attenuated a lot. Okay, so those what that's what we expect. And then the last thing we want to find is what is the uh, output signal at steady state. So V sub O sub steady state as a function of time for these frequencies, these above freaks. So what is the actual equation as a function of time for these three frequencies? We'll have the attenuation we'll need the phase shift, right? We have the attenuation, so we'll know how much this output, I'm sorry, this uh, input magnitude is attenuated from these H of J's, and we'll just need to know the phase shift. All right, so for part A, um, no, wait, we're given, uh, yeah, so the, one, this is 1.5 kilo ohms. This guy is 250 millihenry. So you're given you're given this filter with these values, and you're just asked to to apply the math. It's just a, in a first level, just getting into what does a low pass filter do? What does it look like? All right. So first off, right out the bat, we can calculate the cutoff frequency because we're given R and L. So this is 1.5 times 10 to the third over 250 times 10 to the minus third. 250 millihenrys and 1.5 kilo ohms, and that ends up with 6,000 radians per second. And they want, that's the cutoff frequency in radians per second, but they want that in hertz, so just this little thing, if you haven't seen it before, a way to do the unit calculations, and you know, it's simple here, but as you move on in, in, your, in your various courses, these unit transformations will get ugly, so it's good to have a, a nice formal process to, to, to look at these. So anyway, this is the way I do it when, when I have, like if I had a whole series of these things, I would do it this way. Anyway, 6,000 is in radians per second. And if we divide by one over two pi, that's one cycle per radian, uh, one cycle per two pi radians. So the radians cancel and you end up with cycles per second, which is a hertz. So it's 955 cycles. You could write it out, cycles per second, second, which is a hertz. <clears throat> So that's just a little formal way to write out these these unit transformations. Anyway, that's our cutoff frequency, 955. 
Okay, so for, uh, for B, we're asked to find the attenuation of these various frequencies. So for B, we're going to use the transfer function for a low-pass filter, which is omega sub C over S plus omega sub C. And what we, uh, so the transfer function has given us a function of S, but to solve it for various frequencies, we need to change it to um, J omega, which is just one of those things. Need, so we need H as a function of J omega. And just to be clear, um, omega sub C is a constant in, in this formula. So um, you just you just basically uh, s swap out j omega. I'm just kind of being clear like that because it's, there's so many things and some are some things are constants and some things are variables and it's confusing. So anyway, that's what we're doing. So basically, instead of h of s, we need h of j omega, and um, omega sub c is a constant. And it's six thousand in this case, and s is j omega. All right, so that's what we, we need. We need this. And then we just solve at each uh, freak, these, these three freaks that we got, okay? So, um, so omega equals omega C equals 6,000. That's, that's this first freak that we want to solve at. So we end up with H at J 6,000 is 6,000 over 6,000 plus J 6,000. So that's that's a phasor, really. We've, we've reduced it to a, a, a constant uh, sinusoidal thing, and it's just a phasor. So now plug these into your, into your calculator, and you get 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5 J, which is in polar form, 0 0.77, with an angle of minus 45 degrees. This is the attenuation. This is the magnitude of the transfer function solved at j omega. It's the attenuation. So that's the first, um, that's this first answer. That's the, how much this, uh, um, You know what? This should be a 707. I think I have a boo-boo somewhere. Because we're solving at the cutoff frequency, which is 1 over square root of 2. It should be 707. So that's that one. Then uh, we'll solve this at omega is 0 0.3 omega C. So at a, at a lower frequency, which we would expect to have a higher attenuation here. That, we would, that is, we would expect lower frequency to pass because this is a low-pass filter. So that's zero, 0 0.3 times 6,000. So it's 1,800 radians per second. So what is the attenuation at? Uh, so what is the transfer function? You know, what is H of J3000? J what is the attenuation of, of 3,000 radians per second? 1,800. Where did 3,000 come from? Don't know. What is the attenuation of this... Uh, of this frequency. So it's going to be 6,000 over 6,000 plus J1800 is you end up with 0 0.917 minus 0 0.275 J in rectangular form, which is 0 0.958 of an angle of minus 16.7 degrees. So this is the attenuation. So a lower frequency is attenuated less Okay, that, that is, it mostly gets through, 95% of it gets through, whereas at the cutoff frequency only uh, 0.707 or 71% 70, get through. What about a high frequency at 3 omega C? So that's going to be 3 times 6,000. It's going to be 18,000. So the H at J18,000, the ma uh, the uh, value of the transfer function is uh, 6,000 over 6,000 plus J18,000. 
ends up with 0 0.1 minus 0 0.3 J. And we want the polar form of that, which your calculator will tell you is 0 0.316 with an angle of minus 71.6 degrees. So this one has a, has a small magnitude number, which means it's attenuated a lot. Uh, so the high frequency is attenuated a lot. So these three things, it's worth it to plot these things to, you know, understand a little better. So, you know, let's, let's plot these. So what we got is we got this transfer function, it's, which is the magnitude of H of J omega as a function of omega, the magnitude of H of J omega, or the attenuation as a function of, of omega. And we've got the this curve that looks it looks kind of like it looks like that. <clears throat> and it starts off at one, drops down to zero, and uh, at the cutoff frequency. A signal that, so we've got these input signals coming into, into this box and they come out. They come in, they come out. This one comes in and some input signal at this frequency, which was, uh, this was, uh, what was that? Uh, 6,000. So a, a signal at, at 6,000 hertz will come out 70% of that or 0 0.707 which is exactly 1 over square root of 2 that's the attenuation of uh, of a signal at the cutoff frequency and if you put in a, a low a, a lower uh, a lower frequency signal like one one th approximately 0.3 of that, which was the 1800 signal. This is the 1800 rating per, rating per se second signal. It's attenuated much less. It's attenuated at uh, 0 0.96. But most of it gets through. And then the 1800 signal, which is three times, be out here. This is the 18. I'm sorry, the 18,000 signal. It's attenuated 0.3132. So a lot. This signal is, uh, is mostly attenuated. Only uh, only 32% of it gets through. This high frequency signal, the low frequency signal, most of it gets through. And at the cutoff, exactly this 707 gets through. So that's what that's all about. This stuff just intro to these filter things. Okay, part C. We want these time domain output signals at steady state at various at various freaks at these three freaks 1800 6000 and 18000 so what we're going to do okay we're going to use the ss response eqs from chapter 12 so you got to go look at those things, and I'll list those those three things. There, so let's see. I could, I could put them up here. We have x of t, and then we have y of output of t. And if this was a steady state input, then which it is, it's this uh, steady state input. Uh, what are the what is y what is y at this? Uh, uh, these these things come so uh, got a steady state input signal as a function of time. What's the steady state output signal? So the steady state from chapter twelve, the steady state input signal x of t is a cosine omega t plus phi, and the magnitude of the well actually just the transfer function itself is given by the um, It's given by the magnitude component, and then this e to the j sub theta, uh, j theta sub w, and y steady state of t is the original signal input ampli uh, a times the 
magnitude of, of uh, the transfer function solved at, at j omega times cosine omega t plus phi plus this shift due to the transfer function theta sub w. So this, let's see, this is the uh, this is this attenuation, and this is the uh, this is the phase shift. So you now basically, you put a, an input signal into this guy; it's going to be attenuated by a certain amount and then shifted by a certain amount. Yeah, that's it. So. Um, we have those we have those attenuation and phase shifts over here. This is the magnitude of H J omega, and uh, and these three values. These are the uh, these are the theta theta sub omega values. These three things. So uh, the um, Output voltage at steady state at the cutoff frequency is A is 50, that's, uh, you know, that's the input frequency. Um, times this attenuation, cosine uh, that was at six. This frequency was six thousand. The cutoff t plus zero is this phi. This is this is zero because it's just fifty cosine omega t. There's no phi in there. There's no phase shift in the original input signal, so it's just zero plus uh, right minus forty five degrees. This is the phase shift. Okay, so just the original input signal's amplitude attenuated by a certain amount and shifted by a certain amount. So the final answer is 35.35 cosine 6,000 T minus 45 degrees. That's the, that's the, um, the steady state uh, output signal at 6,000 radians per second, the cutoff frequency. What about the steady state output signal at 0 0.3 of omega C? That is this low frequency. What does that signal look like? And that guy is the original input uh, signal amplitude times this attenuation, right? The lower frequency is attenuated much less. Cosine, the frequency is 1800 now. This 0.3 omega C is 1800 T plus zero minus 16.7. So the final answer is 47.89 cosine 1800 T minus 16.7. So a pretty strong signal with not a whole lot of phase shift. It's almost the same as the original 50 and it hasn't been shifted too much. And then what about the steady state output signal at three times the cutoff frequency. That's going to be 50 in that attenuation, because this is a high frequency signal. It's attenuated a lot. 0 0.316 cosine 18,000 is omega now. T minus 0 mi minus 71.6. Final answer is 15.81 cosine 18,000 T minus 71.6. So it's attenuated a lot. It still gets through, but a much weaker uh, volume, basically. It's not as loud. And um, it shifted a lot. You wouldn't hear that. Like I like to think about tones. If these were like musical tones, this would just be quieter. But you, you can't really hear a phase shift in in music you know because everything's vibrating and they're all they're all producing these cosine waves like there's a guitar there's a flute and there's a piano you know they're all they all have a certain volume but they all they all have their own phase shift none of them are lined up on t equals zero you know 
they're all doing their own thing. So the human ear, and at least the human ear anyway, is not sensitive to these to these phase shifts, it, which is kind of amazing that the human ear can even pull out these different signals, but it does. So that's part C. And then the last thing that we can do is just think about in time domain what's going on. So we've got time, and then we've got all of these V0 of T signals. So one of them's at 48, right? Um, this one's at 48, another one's at... So one's at 48, one's at 35, one's at 15 or 16, these three amplitudes. So you've got a sinusoidal signal like that. This guy with a certain shift. And then you've got another guy that's smaller and shifted by some amount, right? And then you've got another guy that's, you know, that's smaller and and has another 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 shift. These three different three different amplitudes and three different uh, phase shifts. And once again, you if these were musical tones, you could you could hear these amplitudes would come out as volume or how loud the tone is. And the phase shift in terms of music, you really wouldn't hear. But these phase shifts are important. We're going to look at later uh, when we uh, when we start adding together these sig these signals. Right now, this is just three independent signals. Really, I've just shown them on the same graph. I don't know to help visualize what these signals look like relative to each other. But there's they happen one at a time in this particular problem. We're varying the uh, the frequency on this. Um, on this signal here, and we're we're seeing what happens when it comes out. I've just plotted all three on the same axis, but it, uh, they're not all happening at the same time. That is important for later on. Anyway, this is just a low pass filter. Okay, just introductory problem. I hope that was useful to y'all. See you next time.